Yo guys, I've got a spark which I'm gonna use to ignite the fire for a brand new episode of the Skanders Trap Team Soul Seeker Series in my channel. Today is Sheep Flush where we've got to protect our flop. And you know what? I think there's no better way to protect an our flop than with wallop. I'm well aware that I said flop rather than flop. I think the flop and wallop rhyming is, you know, part of what made this destiny. Also, most pronunciations are hilarious. Why do you think I've been taking the piss out of tough work? Uh, ever since I made for a bold mispronunciation, uh, mind you. So here's our first stage. I can't wait to be annihilating any fools who dares to come close to my sheepy friends. I'm sure it's a damn good thing that we don't have friendly fire on right now. Otherwise, those sheep were as good as dead, thanks to all up. But yeah, uh, this is what I've wallet for. As you can see, this is absolute annihilation incarnate. I almost feel sorry for these guys. Almost anyway. Boom, they're out of here. Ah, I wanted to give that guy a chance only to ultimately crush his hopes, you know, uh, let him think for a moment he could win, and then ultimately obliterate him in the end anyway. That's just part of the satisfaction, don't you know? So let's be pounding some more dudes. Yeah, this is what pounding looks like. I almost feel sorry for these guys, almost anyway. Now, if there ever was a way to kick off um, a Skardis Trap Team Soul Seekers episode here on the channel, this would be how, after we're done with all of these um, arena challenges inspired by obviously the arena of the 10th chapter, so once we're done with all of them, we're going to head down and do some more Chaos Doom challenges, probably two levels worth, get past uh, wave 30 in this episode at least, because we have 100 waves to go and we've done 10 of them, so we're 10% done with the Chaos Doom challenge, therefore meaning we have a long ways to go, and we've got to really start putting a dent in that uh, mode, otherwise we're going to be doing it FOREVER! And that's one thing I don't want to be doing. Chaos Doom Challenge, uh, doing it forever. Sounds fun! Said nobody ever in the history of ever. Anyway, I'm gonna be proud of myself whether Brock likes it or not. And we, my friends, are gonna move onto stage number two. Yeah, we love to see it. We also love to see this guy who's about to be pounded into poop. Boom, baby! Oh, so much people get around. We love to see it, we do. We love to see it. Even more poundage. Yeah, baby. Oh, and these guys want piece of the action. Well, I'll give them some action, all right. Um, they're going to see so much action, in fact, that they're not even going to be able to conduct any action of their own. And Wallop truly is the only action you need in the series. This is a very much warm welcome to the 18th episode of Trap 2 Soul Seekers here on the channel. I can't believe we're at 18 episodes already. That's nine hours worth of footage. Oh, wait a minute. Wallop seems to be slightly uh, tilted. Yeah, for some reason, this stage has a glitch where your scanners will get tilted um, at an angle and they'll stay that way throughout the entire arena. Like, as you can tell, Wallop is slightly tilted to the left. Uh, it happens with everyone. I remember it happening to Deja Vu and Jawbreak when I played through previously. So, I can't tell as a pattern as to why this happens. It's basically just poor programming like the rest of Trap Team. <laughs> Not necessarily even poor programming, just unfinished programming. Which, to be fair, I'm okay with, as I have bias towards Trap Team, and I will overlook his flaws uh, for what it does right, which is basically everything else. Like, sure, it's glitchy and it's jank, but let's be honest, something as small as a visual like this, it doesn't even change your hitbox, it's just a visual. It's hilarious, is what it is. You know, it's a visual, a funny one at that. So, harmless glitches like these, I'm okay with. In fact, even the Game Breaker ones, like Infinite, um, Villain, Timers, uh, Double Jump glitches, because of how they fundamentally break the game and make it play like any, uh, unlike any other Skarns game, making it more unique, uh, in a way, it's the kind of thing I admire almost, you know, it adds a more depth to the gameplay loop, especially for the sake of speedruns and things, where you can, uh, use glitches to get to the credits as fast as possible. That's what you have any percent runners for. Obviously, you can have glitches and runs in this game, but glitches and runs in this game aren't nearly as fun. Boom, baby, just like it's not nearly as fun to play this arena with anyone other than Wallop, because Wallop is, uh, he is so much fun. Uh, as much as I hate how uninspired his moveset is, because look at that. Hammers, hammers, and more hammers. Wow, I feel so inspired. But despite how lame the moveset is, it's incredibly fun to just obliterate enemies. And the sound effects too, you know, it's got a clattering and a clang. You just truly feel the raw power behind this guy. And look, even the animations of his hammer are tilted like the character himself. 
Yeah, nicely done. Boom, that guy's down. Then the ad here, and so will his little friend. Oh, he almost attacked a sheep, but luckily for me, he almost counters. But an orm, I still have pretty much an entire flock. One guy lost his helmet, though, so we gotta keep our eyes up. The fools like this guy back here. <laughs> Boom, get Rex on the door. And that guy's about to face the same fate. And Lord Hammer. Boom, boom, boom. Pound it. Oh, wow, that deal was nowhere near as much damage as all the other attacks. So why would I even bother with that attack, right? Why not just use a primary and nothing but the primary? You know, it's easily the most powerful, most effective one. The other moves just exist. And they're basically the same as the front move. Uh, but rather than pound your hammer, you launch it out. Or you launch it up. Wow, you go from one attack that launches your hammer forward to launching your hammer, up, uh, hammer upward. Again, just so inspired. Yeah, at least now I can make the title of the episode, It's Hammer Time. It would be appropriate given that Wallet might even wind up being the uh, character for me. We'll have to wait and see now, won't we? Anyway, I bring more poundish to these fools. So much poundish. We love to see it. We do. We love to see it. And bravo to me indeed. I think I should give myself a good old pat on the back for that sheep flush right there. What we have next is some sewer ball. And we're going to be doing that. Not with Wallop, despite the fact that I've got to take off a portal in time. Instead, we're going to be doing it with yet another core who hasn't yet had the time to, um, you know, be given the spotlight. And that is going to be... Flipwreck. Hopefully I don't regret this for this character is hot garbage and I'm not a big fan of him, but we'll see if he can prove me wrong as we begin to be making some waves. Yeah, and in the end of the previous episode we did obviously have uh, Flipwreck's water core compadre, so I think it's about time we brought him into it. Man, we definitely took our time getting that so ball, didn't we? Who knows, maybe with buffs Flipwreck can actually be good. And I do like the animation of his sword swing, it's, it's pretty cool. He's, he's a cool character in concept, it's just his moveset is awful. And I hate it. I mean seriously, look at that, I'm honing in on single enemies. And it's taking so long and so much time and effort. And we pound it! Yeah, how is this character as lucky as he is? He's fine, fine at best. Die, thank you. Okay, give me Sewer Ball. Or not, I guess you could also do that alternatively. Oh, nice, I got Sewer Ball anyway. Yeah, why well, do any other attacks when I have this one? Once again, like Wallop, this guy's a bit of a, uh, you know, one man shown that this is all what you need. Fishy projectiles with a very satisfying sound effect, gotta be honest here. Okay, where are some more guys for me to take down? They must die! Boom! Like that. Just like that. And now we have more grenades. Great, because it's clear I haven't seen any of these guys already. Strike! Oh wow, that guy just kind of came invincible for a second there. Luckily we got our sewer ball back pretty much instantaneously, so we're alright with this. Wow, that was a lot of poundage. And wow, we actually get to see another slumber trap. I haven't seen these since uh, Chunky Mountain. Yeah, get Rex on it, boy. And then we're gonna get that back, and we're gonna strike down more fools. Die, thank you. He's out here. We got some pizza, and now I'm gonna skip over the NSU Deep Stew by pressing best button video game. Let's play it all. We love to see it. We do. We love to see it. So I'm getting emails on my phone for me to quickly check. Hopefully, I don't lose my Super Bowl on the time. And it's just Disney Plus telling me what's coming soon to Disney Plus. It's just pretty much more of Miss Marvel and Star Wars and all comes out pretty soon as well. By the time this episode goes live, stack series might actually be out. But after Boba Fett and Obi Wan, I have no faith in future Star Wars series because uh, you know Disney's in a is currently on the trend of ruining the love Star Wars characters. Uh, first, they did it to literally all the legacy characters from the original trilogy: Han, Luke, and Leia, completely ruined. And now they've gone and done it to Obi-Wan and Darth Vader. Two of the most beloved and most easy characters to not fuck up. And yet Disney gone on ahead and did it anyway. Thank you for nothing, you just Disney. Literally nobody asked for this. Okay, uh, I could be going on Super Bowl right now, but, you know, I can't quite get to it. Oh boy, I'm taking a lot of damage. You see, this is why I think Flip Breakers are no fucking good. This is why... Even his soul gem doesn't work half the time, because that was what I just pulled off right there, his soul gem. Normally you do a bunch of attacks and he'll, uh, you know, jump off his, um, 
like ship wheel with massive ton of damage and even then it only works when it wants to oh well they're dead i also lost my super in the process just to make a change come back to me with my slow ass speed luckily i have more speed now to have super ball but i have to get close and personal with a ball and chain which is guaranteed not to end well luckily I left behind some food so pretty much all the damage i took was uh you know practically eliminated uh in seconds and hey, we even got a pretzel too. Who knew that dolphins were such big fans of pretzels? Please, in real life, do not feed dolphins pretzels. You will kill them. You will pull off a, um... Oh, what's his name from Tweeners? I want to say Nick. Whatever the character's name is in Tweeners too, he manages to kill off a dolphin by feeding a, a, a hamburger and a hot dog. Don't do that. Don't pull off a, that character in a certain name here. Like I said, I want to say his name is Nick, but I'm not 1000% confident in that. All I know is that in between this, it's been a while since I've watched it, and I should probably watch it again, because that series is fucking hilarious. Anyway, we got more op -ness. We love to see what we do. We love to see it. Oh, ouch, and now I'm taking steps to the face, apparently. Yeah, I have sewer ball. I like sewer balls. You know, it buffs up my damage and makes this character actually bearable, which is a nice change of pace. Okay, cool, he's out of here, sweet. These guys too will be out of here. Also sweet. Yeah, take my freaking um, shield thing the bob to the face. I'm also gonna, uh, gonna grab that uh, orange slice. Does anyone have any orange slices? And we're gonna kill it at Slobber Trap. Nicely done. We're gonna kill this uh, ball and chain as fast as possible so that then he's dealt with. Fantastic. And now I have more fishies. Yay me. And now I'm getting ruined because of the chill bill. I hate how easily his animations can be interrupted and his uh, gameplay pace can be brought to an absolute crawl. Again, another thing I'm explaining about this character. Okay, sweet, we're done, we beat this arena. Uh, now that means I don't have to play Flip Break anymore. Hallelujah! But the question is, who do I play for this opponent conflict? Which is a very decent question. I reckon we should go with a little bit of Wildfire, because why the heck not? He's a beast, the arena calls for a beast, so we're going to be bringing out the beast for this here beastly arena. Uh, where we're going to be skipping over in a so deep stew, uh, using the best button video game as per the norm. So, let's absolutely annihilate some fools! Yeah, this is definitely not an episode for actual seeking of souls, apparently, but at least we have uh, some progress having we made an our 100% completion, which we need before we even defeat Chaos anyway. It's like the last 10 episodes of Skylar's Giant Soul Seekers didn't even uh, feature any soul seeking, we were too busy getting that 100% completion. Then again, for final episodes of all of the Soul Seeker series thus far, I've pretty much been just us going around uh, again for 100% completion and all that. Boom! Let's wreck some fools. Take these guys down and out. We love to see it, we do. Boom! Take all of you out. And we're going to pull you in nice and closely. Oh, yeah. Oh, but watch out for the mine, obviously, which we did. Yay. Bring you in all up close and personal like. Very nice. And boom. Oh yeah. And boom some more. Oh yeah. I mean we're gonna grab some pizza, not that we need it. We're also gonna bring out our mighty roar. We need to jump straight out of it. <laughs> you know, who needs a cooldown, right? That's what we have our jumping ability for to nullify all the cooldown. Okay, these guys want to go, so I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna give them a good righteous old fight. I am. Um... Boom! And that includes the mighty roar. Boom! Take him down, or at least start to. And mighty roar. And pound it. And bring you in for the roar. And bring you in again for the roar. Oh, yeah! Baby! Boom! Pound it. Ouch, get hit in the face, but pound it! Oh yeah, so much poundage. We love the poundage, yeah. Oh, watch out for mine too, whilst we're at it. Yeah, we're definitely calling this Hammer Time. It's the utmost appropriate uh, name and thumbnail combination, which is why Wallop will be used for thumbnail for the first time, which is bizarre, because he's one of the very first souls we seeked out. So, we're 18 episodes in, and we're only just using Wallop's uh, thumbnail. It's about damn time, if you were to ask me. 
which is the game coming to uh, all PlayStation Essential users, such as myself, in July of 2022. Now I get to trade in my original copy I bought on my birthday of all things, get some money back for that, because it's going to be completely free with PlayStation uh, Plus and all that. Love me all for free PlayStation Plus stuff I do, I love it indeed. Am I ready for a flag defense challenge? Not really, but you know, it's gonna be thrown my way regardless, so I suppose I should rise to the occasion, as they say. Besides, it's not exactly like, like I'm in trouble. I have 10,026 health to go around, and the sewer ball! If there's any character who doesn't need a sewer ball, it is wildfire. You know, apparently, this character isn't said enough already, and apparently, I'm taking damage to God knows what. It's fine, the game has to cheat somehow, otherwise the enemy stand no chance against the wildfire up here. Just look at this, mate. Once again, I almost feel sorry for these guys. Almost, anyway. He's dead, this flag is mine, and the sewer ball will be mine too. Told you so. We've managed to grab it after we took the 11 damage from the goop, so, uh, you know, we're clearly doing something right over here. Including fire, which is dealing 17 damage, and now that is just plain ridiculous. Yeah, if there ever was a character who's over the top when it comes to his damage output, it is this guy over here. What did I even get hit by again? Nah, this is fine. Uh, we don't even need pursuable. ball. Like, this is wildfire we're talking about here. Like I said, if anyone doesn't need pursuable, ball, it is this guy. I think he's perfectly fine about it, to be honest. And fire him up. Oh, yeah. Cuckoo Clock is down. Which is good, because I'm very much frightened of Cuckoo Clock. He's very much a force to be reckoned with, which is what makes him a very... Very underrated villain. No, don't you think you're raising that flag? You get over here, man. Or better yet, just be killed by the very flag you're trying to raise. Irony at its finest. What do you know? Even a slug fella can raise up the flags. Anyway, after a beautiful display, we get to finish off with a candle hat. Interesting. Slime time tournament has been beaten. Uh, we've the master ranked up, so now we're gonna head back to the academy before tackling some more of the chaos doom challenges. But let's see what our presents have for us. If it's anything like uh, money or experience, we might as well switch out the trade head and give it to him. But for now, it's pretty much just a hat. Very nice, a shire hat. So we're not gonna wear that, and we're going to get out of here quickly before I was about to say before another present comes, but you know, it uh, came at us. At, a same, at insane speed, so we wasn't quite able to bypass it in time, but that's fine. We'll just, uh, you know, switch up the tread head and then go to the Chaos Doom Challenge. We'll switch back to what, regardless. Tread and shred. Yeah, tread and shred, alright. So we get to go from level 4 to level 6. Yes, we do indeed. Fantastic. Okay, so horrible something temple. Let's do this thing. And bring out the wallops along the way. Hammer it home. Yeah, hammer it home, all right. I mean, it's not crush hour. It's hammering time, and we're hammering it home. Well, that was rude, chaos. Why would you say that? Anyway, I can't wait to break up that Triptanium cluster with our very Trapmaster himself and uh, grant ourselves the access to a disembodied prison break hand for a tower. Yeah, that's the Earth Elemental Tower for you. Yeah, I kind of gather that much, Eon. Thank you, not really, for the tutorial. So, we be pounding it. It's hovering time! Wait a minute, that's a completely different character. Ah oh, well, you know, the thing, if he was to be put into an element of Skarnas, Earth would fit him nicely. In fact, I think that could be a really interesting video concept, to put Marvel characters into elements from Skarnas. We obviously know what uh, elements uh, certain characters would be, like Iron Man, obviously would be Tech. Where would I put Captain America, you know, characters like that? You know, it's a super soldier serum created from science, so technology, I guess, for Captain America as well. I don't know, Captain America is one that's difficult to place. Hulk, I guess, would be magic, just because he's so similar to that pop fizz, and his ability is kind of derived from magic, which is also a way to put out to, like, Doctor Strange. There are some elements that you'd barely even see, but hey, Ghost Rider could be an undead. A Ghost Rider could also be a fire character, to be fair. If he was an amalgamation of two elements, it would be a fire undead amalgamation. Anyway, you guys have got to die right now. I don't approve of you trying to destroy stuff, which is why I destroy you. It's only fair. 
Oh, and now comes some heavy dudes. Let's take out the heavy dudes. Pound it, pound it, pound it, pound it, pound it, pound it. Let's go get him. Get him! Hey, don't you guys dare hurt my towers. That would be very rude and totally uncalled for. Boom, he's out of here, and the wave is complete. Bring out the next one. Wow, well, that's a lot of fire. So many fire traps. Anyway, there's lots of tech and magic to go around. For now, though, we're just gonna stick with Warlord. I can't be asked to continuously switch. You know, I was asking for too much. So when we come to the end of the episode, I might actually bother switching out the towers and then set up for the next episode where a new character shall be placed onto the portal. So long as Wallop is doing just fine for one tower, and um, you're right, I'm having a lot of fun, Chaos. Traps in Trap Team? Who saw that covered? It's always like that's part of the game's title. Yeah, it's being said, so long as Wallop has blood thrown through his breast, we'll be just fine. I've got to be careful though, because I'm clearly running out of things to say. Yeah, that's four from Age of Ultron for you, or should I say, the boring character. Yeah, Age of Ultron just has so many characters that don't feel like they really add much. They're just kind of there because, oh, it's an Avengers movie, they have to be there. Okay, let's get getting them. Yeah, they've got got. Love to see it, we do. We love to see it. Yeah, baby, so much poundage. It's a shame this much experience is going to waste all in one go, but, you know, sometimes those are sacrifices we have to play in order to play characters that are maxed out. Uh, so much fun, we, you know, have to let the experience go to waste as a result. Yeah, get him, disembodied prison break hand, get him. You see, for Earth Tower is OP, and that's why Prison Break is also OP, those who don't like him are just wrong about him, because that is how opinions work. Prison Break is incredibly underrated and overhated, I will tell you that much. I'll also tell you this much, the uh, wave has been completed, and we live to see it. Finally, the game is going to give me an opportunity for more Earth Towers. It's about them time, I'm just going to stay say, in uh, Crash Bandicoot and all that. See, so, yeah, let's be activated in that Earth Tower. Now we have two disembodied Prison Break hands. Sweet. I also love the fact that when you uh, upgrade these towers, they go from the Prison Break motion, so they go from the green to obviously the orange, you get down to the beam path, to the red, which is what is Hyper Beam Prison Break counterpart processes. Man, that was a lot of damage, and we love to see it, we do. We love to see it. No, that's a lot of damage. Die, get pounded, sonny boy, get pounded. Watch out. Oh boy, now I'm always getting pounded. I gotta be careful here, otherwise I'll die, and that'll be very depressing. Chompy rain incoming? No, not the chompy rain. Anything but the chompy rain. Okay, cool, we're gonna pound some of them. We're gonna pound these guys too, even though it seems as though our tower is kind of doing that for us. Because it's badass, like Prison Break. Anyway, we're down to half health, so I think now we should really start switching out some, uh, you know, towers. So, since Dark is here, we'll obviously activate for Earth Tower first, and then we'll switch out for Blackout to get that tower constructed like. Maybe even conclude the episode with him, we'll see how many waves we get through the time we have left. Darkness falls. Oh yeah, darkness falls, alright. Now let's go get those enemies right now. Let's get them, let's get them in their stupid faces of stupidity. So without further ado, here we go with the 14th wave. Uh, you know, um, far from the last one, that is. And uh, now we have more uh, things for me to skip over because more traps being introduced. But you know what? I reckon we'll be just fine. We have a triple star tower, we have a two star tower, and we have other towers where there were no towers. Which means plenty of towers to go around. Plenty of towers indeed. Do you guys dare attack my dark tower? I need to give it time for it to actually get upgraded. Oh, and now I got a chompy rain. Good measure, apparently. Oh wow, that uh, troll didn't stand much of a chance. Not against the might of my earth tower, mind you. Oh wow, almost on this wave already. Um. Blackout, quite a beast in it, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, now let's bring out our mic. I was about to say let's bring out our mighty bus orb, but apparently the game had other plans in mind. Yeah, there you go. We got there eventually with just as regular attacks. Who needs a bus orb when you have regular attacks? I'm alright. So I think 600 health is enough for now. We'll uh, rock and roll with the next wave, utilizing Blackout over here. 
Man, some way to laves, waves, way to laves? Way to laves? What the fuck is a way to lave? No, what I'm trying to say here is that way to laves certainly are going to get difficult and we are definitely going to lose characters to this challenge. We're not going to lose characters to story levels. We've lost one character to a story level already and that's one too many. So we're going to avoid that. But losing characters to kill uh, Doom Challenge on the other hand, like Thanos, that is inevitable. Okay, boom, those guys are down. As is the Marvel reference uh, quota for the episode, that is down. We obliterated that quota. Okay, we got to uh, defend our Dark Tower over here. Uh, that health bar has seen better days, that's for sure. Luckily, given that we are a Dark Character, towers that match our element are uh, giving buff healing. Okay, boom, baby. Yeah, rather than healing it for 20, we heal it for 35 if we match the element of the tower at hand, which is exactly what Blackout does from the Dark Tower over here. You guys have got to go, man. This is so uncool what you're doing over here. I'm getting fired upon. That's also not cool. There's so many things around here that are not cool. Look at there. We fully regenerated that tower. And this tower. Pretty much the same. So every single tower shall be triple stars. So we, won't even, we aren't even close to requiring to end up the episode yet. So we're going to keep things rolling with Blackout over here. His health is looking just fine. Just fine. Yes, hey! Welcome to the 16th way. Welcome to Jurassic Towers. Yeah, that would make a theme park. Way start. Okay, here we go with the 16th wave. We have five more we remaining, thanks to the hint right there. Thank you, hint. I can do the math myself. Uh, let's be finishing this off. Because as Captain America once said... Fine. I'll do it myself. It wasn't even Captain America in the quote, it was Thanos. It was Thanos who said, Fine, I'll do it myself. Um, for me, for Captain America, is obviously the fact that, you know, you ask him to do something, and you're like, No, no, I don't think I will. You know, as a Captain America, even though it would have been cool to have heard, uh, heard Chris Evans say, Fine. I do it myself. He gets very close to saying that in Lightyear, because obviously the newest Pixar film, Lightyear, is one where, um... Lightyear is very much a character who loves doing things by the books. He wants to do things his way, and he doesn't want to put others in harm's way. You know, he, well, he prefers being a one-man show. Throughout the course of the film, he learns about uh, his team and about, you know, making mistakes, because this is the humble beginnings he came from. So it'd be hypocritical of him to, you know... Uh, you, you can criticise people's mistakes whilst also not um, guilt tripping them because of it. Yeah, there we go. 16th wave has been completed. They haven't even broke the mystery box of doom yet. These bad guys have been very uh, terrible at being bad guys, aren't they? You know, I don't know where Chaos is getting his bad guys, but it's clearly not a reliable source. Uh, we will happily accept all this treasure, especially since Blackout's treasure took a uh, a massive toll when we bought out Auric a few episodes prior. So I think it's about time we started compensating him uh, for his sacrifice. At least a sacrifice to his treasure count, mind you. So here we go, four more waves remaining. This will probably wind up being the last one of this particular episode, though. We are very uh, quickly... Uh, approaching that 30 minute marker. Okay, boom, boom. We shake the room some more with all of this uh, power. So much power. Now let's be buzz it over here. Yeah, my controller even rumbles as I buzz along, which is very satisfactory. But oh no, we lost our dark tower after so much efforts to. Um, Protect it, and yet those efforts, they were in vain. We're not going to let our Earth Tower face the same fate. Forget that shit. We've got to be careful, though, because we're so surely running out of health here, which is not all we want. It's the exact opposite of what we want. Please, but no thank you. Okay, where are more fools to be destroyed? That is the question, my friends. That would be the question. See ya! What do you want to be ya? So, what tower are we going to replace our Dark Tower with is the question. It's going to be light, so it looks like we're going to be ending off this episode with a night light himself. First things first, got to actually take uh, Blackout off the portal to make this uh, possible. Boom! 
There you go, baby. See the light. Yeah, I see the light. I see plenty of light. I see almost too much light. If that is a possibility, which of course it is. There is such a thing as seeing too much light. There is such a thing as seeing too much of anything. Besides food, I can never see too much food. I love seeing too much food. But that being said, we're going to end off the episode here with Nightlight failing to hide behind the Mission Box of Doom, apparently. With that being said and done, this video is coming to an end, and I want to thank you all so much for watching. By merely clicking on this video, you've shown support and helped it garner recognition so it can reach many of the viewers here on YouTube. I'd love to see you take the extra step and leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Also, be sure to comment below and push that subscribe button whilst you're down there. By clicking elsewhere on screen, you can either check out a video that's specifically picked out for you, or you can check out the rest of the playlist for a series you just watched. Before ending off, I'd like to thank all of my Blazing Knights and Scorching Dragons whose support helped make these videos possible. I'll be seeing you in the next video, and until the moment arises, PEACE!